and today we're going to have a look at a katana 47 named Kalima. Here she is. And I hope that our friends the ducks don't make too much of a racket so we can hear what's going on. Um, so Kalima has uh, arrived from France um, when she first came to Tahiti with her first owners and then her second owners brought her out here to New Zealand. Um, she, so she's only ever had two owners, she's never been in commercial activities, no charters, nothing like that. Just uh, the first owners were a retired couple from France who had previously had a Katana 42 and they sold that to upgrade to 47 to go around the world. And they took very, very good care of her, um, arrived in Tahiti, spent quite a bit of time there and then her current owner, also a European family, bought her in the middle of COVID and are ship the family over there, they have two children, spent some time in Tahiti and then started their cruise across the South Pacific Ocean. They eventually arrived in New Zealand in late November and uh, spent the next few weeks, um, if not months, having the boats completely done up all over again for her new family who are, we are hoping to meet very soon. So you'll see as we go along that um, there isn't anything I can imagine on this boat that I can find or anybody can find that still has to have some, some, some work done to. Um, it's just quite astonishing what they've done with this boat and how beautifully presented she is. So um, I actually have uh, some videos of the boat out of the water when she was up here at uh, the very renowned Opoi Yard. And she was up there for weeks, over the whole Christmas period. Um, she had a whole new antifoul and her bottom is really smooth. There is no antifoul buildup and it's not heavy or uh, bumpy. It's really smooth and she had her hull uh, polished up and any little gel coat dings that might have been accumulated during her long journey from France to here was done up superbly by the local shipwrights. You can't see a thing. And there was nothing major, just like a couple of like little you know, fifth uh, to dollar coin um, size ding in a couple of places. Um, and she was fully polished up as a wash and she, her hull could really pass for you actually. It's quite amazing. They've even replaced um, the, the boot top and the stickers on the hull. Um, so yeah, just looks fabulous. So we'll start at the back. So on this side, you'll see that um, that step there. So that obviously was retrofitted. And uh, that is supposed to be to support the it's called a sea power hydro generator, which is designed to with a little propeller like a dynamo on a bicycle to bring a whole heap of power to the boat when the boat is moving. So you know if the boat is doing seven knots or so, you can get up to six hundred watts of power. So all of your solar panels, twice the amounts, will not bring you as much as um, this can do by simply moving the boat. So. For cruisers, especially at night, um, it's fabulous because you have to use a lot of power at night between, you know, your autopilots and all your electronics and your AIs and your radar and all the things you're using. At night, when you're on a passage, that will keep you going. But I mean, this boat has so many different types of battery charging. They are all just so redundant to another. And she has lithium batteries as well. So we'll have a look at this a bit further, but it's basically you don't have to think about power. It's there for anyone to, who wants it. Um, the family could just never have to think about rationing power. The kids were homeschooled, so they had to have a lot of access to running computers and all sorts of devices. Um, that was never a problem. And there is also the water maker, which can run on the 12 volt system as well as the 220 system. So busing and um, all of the instruments that you need, uh, obviously 12 volts. Uh, and uh, so we'll have a look at all of this. And uh, just to have a quick look at the other stern, so this stern here, that's the one that's fitted with, um, with a little ladder there, which fits snugly in here and is deployed when you want it. And uh, so that's kind of like the, when the hydro generator is put in, that's kind of where, you know, you just come on and off the boat. It's a really nice big platform here, so you can comfortably bring your children over, your shopping, everything you need, or go diving from. Um, the owners are keen divers, we'll have a look at the diving gear that's coming through the boat actually. And uh, we'll step aboard and uh, start looking around. All right, so good? Yeah. So now we're on board. And as you can see, um, the Katana 47 has, for performance, it has got so much room, so you know, um, 
I'm not that small and you can see how many of me you can fit in here so um, that table alone can sit eight to ten people comfortably and uh, there is storage underneath the table there is um, cushions and upholstery for all of the all of the seats as well and you have the fully enclosable um, cockpit so you've got two systems that are ready to be deployed as well so one is just for um, the sun and the other one is for weather including rain so it has clears and, and um, it will protect you from the rain so instead of having to unzip one to zip another they are both there ready to go so that's really convenient and um, so now you have the solar panels which were installed I believe in 2021 I'll have to double check my notes these were all installed by the current owner and you can see he also has our super wind wind generator which was also installed in 2021 so that's a really great unit it's really quiet and uh, it's mounted in a way that is not dangerous at all it's just going to do its thing up there and uh, you know just uh, you just stop it if you don't need it but it's it's really safe up there and very strong all of those were over engineered for strengths and uh, they're just really well put together if you have a little look on the Nisset, you'll see the debit system with the tender. So the tender is an absolute limousine. It's, a, I think it's 3.10 um, meters aluminum base um, tender that can accommodate the whole family easily. Uh, it's got a really good floor um, and, uh, and a watertight uh, little compartment at the front. It also has a 25 horsepower engine that's only about a year and a half old as well. And the engine is a little bit oversized for the boat and we thought we should mention this because it should be 20 horsepower for this boat, but up to 20 horsepower, 15, 20 is what's recommended. But a lot of cruisers often find that their tender is their life. Without their tender, they can't do anything. So they need a really, good tender that can take them fast anywhere and also bring a whole heap of gear with them without slowing themselves down. That's why the owners in a very typical blue water cruising fashion upgraded to 25 horsepower Yamaha Enduro engine and uh, that will get them on the plane even with the whole family on board. They can take their diving gear or their diving tanks or all of their shopping or a lot of gear or heavy adults. Um, no problem, the boats will go just as fast. So but if you're alone on the boat, maybe just go easy on the throttle. <laughs> right, so here's y y your life flight, which is easy to deploy as well. So that was just serviced. And um, all of the sheets are Dyneema. They've all just been either replaced in the last few weeks or the last few months. They're all in perfect condition. They go, every one of them goes through um, they are dedicated jammers and they are all controlled with electric power winches. So no skimping on the power winches here. They are all oversized and they are all two speed. And um, you don't just have one power winch here. They're all, they're all power. So this boat is designed to sail by yourself, basically. So the owner um, was is very very experienced in sailing and so were the previous owners and this boat is really for someone who loves sailing loves performance but still wants to be able to accommodate their family and friends um, with all the comforts that they, they might want and if their friends like in their case and the, and the family is not really in like they have got not don't have a lot of experience with sailing to start with then um, Nick, the owner, um, that's his name, can just take care of everything, doesn't have to rely on, on any outside help. He can handle everything safely from the cockpits, from inside, and uh, not even have to bench you on deck when he's at sea. So that's all set up for that. And um, yeah. Yes, so we have, it's great because rather than to have sail bags everywhere, Katana has designed this very handy rope bucket that. Um, Everything is hidden, even under the decks forward, you can see the ropes are all handled away from, from um, so they don't encounter the deck at all, they're all hidden underneath it, so that's a very good design. There's only just a couple of sailbags here, they're all in very good condition. 
for winches. We'll have a look at their helm stations in more details shortly, but that's just a quick overview of the horse. Beautiful wheels. Right, so that nav station is just awesome. So you can um, drop the seat if you want to. So you can sit here or you can sit like this or you can be like this and yeah super comfortable the wheels are not too big they're sturdy um, they, you can hold them if you're losing your balance they're not gonna break and um, you have access on this side to both of the engine starts and controls so that's all the engine electronics and then you have your windlass controls so you can anchor from here the windlass has just been completely serviced by the local specialist and uh, the hydro generator turns on here and um, you have so those electronics and also a bunch of others on either side and um, inside as well so to go through the, actually the electronics have all been checked uh, an electronic specialist has come to check all of them today and they're all working even the older ones that were there before the current owner bought the boat so that includes the other autopilots and uh, the older um, navigation systems everything's there but he's added in 2020 and 2021 new systems so that um, yeah he knew that there would be no problems at all so yeah we'll have a look at all of this in details with um, David, who's been amazing at taking care of the boat since the owners went back to Europe um, three weeks ago. And uh, so he knows everything about the boat and is going to go into the details for us. So thanks, David. Hi, David, so what's going on here? Okay, yeah, um, she's, a, she's a lovely boat. I actually took her out today. And um, as um, Anna said, I'm just looking after a babysitter for uh, the owners. Um, so um, some of the nice features on the boat are you've got these multi-display screens which allow you to display lots of different information. Um, they're not just set to one thing like depth or um, bearing or something like that. You can choose whatever you want for any screen. So that's a really nice feature to have and that's replicated inside at the chart table and uh, also uh, on the combing just above the doorway. So if you don't want to come out here for whatever reason, um, to look at the instruments, you can see them inside, or you can see them from uh, just behind us here in the in the cockpit. There's also a Raymarine Axion uh, chart plotter here, which is uh, one of the latest types, and uh, that's been fitted by the owner. And uh, again, you've got duplication here. Uh, what you see outside, you also can see inside. You might want some dis some information showing on this, different from the information you want inside, um, but it's a very easy to use system. It's touch screen, and. Uh, It'll tell you anything you want to know, really. Um, the boat's all wired up um, and uh, it will relay the information to this screen for you. Um, yeah, as we said at the helm here, you've got the twin throttles for the engine. Um, obviously, you've got an engine on the port side and the starboard side. They're controlled from this side. Uh, you've got a compass here good old-fashioned compass um, uh, with a cover on it and you've got all the instruments here um, for starting and stopping the engines as well as main um, uh, maintaining um, what they're actually doing here, uh, monitoring, sorry. Um, so you've got your rev counters and you've got your temperature gauges here um, and they stop and start from these two individual panels here. Um, the helm also locks from the center here. So actually when you come into a marina and you want to berth the boat, what you tend to do is you tend to come into the channel, you lock the helm in the forward position and at that point you start driving it a bit like a Yeah, tank. that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's very easy to do. I did it this afternoon, so if I can do it, anyone can. <laughs> yeah, this is great. So no need for a stand thruster or bow thruster or anything. With Not at all. She'll, she'll mm -hmm. literally turn in her own space, yeah. um, which, is a, which is a fantastic feature of cats because of the two engines that are so far apart from each yeah, other yeah yeah right so and on the other side we have another autopilot control um, yeah over on this side on the 
port side helm. It's a slightly simpler helm. You get the same seating arrangement here where you can drop and lower the seat for comfort. Nice view forward. Um, and you've got the compass on this side. You've got the helm and then you've got a repeater here for the Raymarine autopilot. Um, and uh, truthfully, that's all you need. Um, uh, when you're actually sailing, you'll probably only visit one of the helms or you'll actually be using the equipment inside. Yeah, um, you have good visibility on those instruments as well from here. It's yeah, very yeah. Good and if you display. go forwards, like I said, if you're sailing along and you don't want to be stood out in the weather, you've got the same thing here. You've got two multi-display screens and on these screens you can choose to show whatever information you want just by scrolling through the various options. Yeah, um, and then inside everything again repeated. Yeah. Yeah, and once again, you come inside the boat and uh, you've got this wonderful chart table, which yeah. is always a big bonus on a boat these days. Mm -hmm. um, quite Adjustable often. seats. Yeah, you've got a nice seat that you can sit here that's going to hold you in if the boat's moving around at all. And from here, you've got, con you've got your uh, control panel for all the switches on the boat. Um, and that will allow you to isolate all the various electronic systems on the boat and electrical systems. Um, here we've actually got a, um, a Victron um, controller, which will tell you everything that the batteries and the charging system is doing. Um, at the moment, the batteries, which are lithium, are showing that they're full. And uh, we have um, the solar panels, we've got the AC input, and we've also got the generator input. It's currently on float because the batteries are nice and full. And uh, you can actually see a little bit of movement. There's some nice animation there, which makes it uh, easy to see what's going on. And you can tell straight away yeah, what's yeah. happening with the batteries. Really great. This unit here is a Victron controller. This is uh, for the inverter and this allows you to, this little number here allows you to um, limit the shore power um, because the last thing you want if you're in some uh, remote area where they haven't got the ability to provide lots of power is to keep tripping the pontoon and um, this allows you to dial it down but it also tells you what the inverter is doing by way of these little lights here on here and uh, your inverter's turning your 12 volt system and ramping it up to 240 on this boat, I believe. Uh, there's a little stereo here, old school CD player, but still works great. And there's also a USB input here and a phono input, which means you can plug your iPad or uh, your uh, iPhone into there, no problem. Um, you've got a couple of 12 volt cigarette charging points here too. Um, and again, here we go with the Ferono, um, Ferruno, sorry, um, uh, instruments on the top here. And then we've also got the GPS um, here, which is telling us what our longitude and our latitude is. It will also give you some other information, speed over ground, course over ground. Again, you can change the information that you actually see on that screen. Um, here we have the Furuno um, uh, 1623 Marine Radar System, um, which gives the boat the ability to obviously see at night time ahead any objects um, and also in fog and heavy rain. Um, that's a very good thing to have on a boat. And then we've got the, um, the ICOM VHF radio here. Um, which uh, allows you obviously to right. communicate on that. And then, yeah, so that phone, SSB, there's so many modes of communication. Yeah, there. yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's really set up well, the boat. Um, you've got satellite telephone here, and you've also got a um, high frequency radio here, um, should you want to go down that road. A little bit more complicated way of communicating, but very good when you're offshore if you want to do long range radio communications. Um, that's fantastic. Um, in this day and age, a lot of us are using satellites for communication at sea. Um, and uh, these are absolutely brilliant um, and they have a place, um, but there's no doubt that the satellite systems that are fitted here are going to be a little bit more convenient, let's yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the boat also has a, a fabulous booster that enables you to pick up Wi Fi a long way offshore. Much yeah, yeah, than, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a, a Wi Fi extender fitted too, which allows you to uh, tap into the local cafe when you're far offshore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, so, so you've got the different other redundant plotters here. Yeah, so here's the plotter which um, goes with the plotter that's outside on the helm station. Um, mm -hmm. This is the Ray Marine unit. Again, you can see where we are parked up in the marina here. Um, very accurate with the charting system that's available. Zoom out and uh, there you go. 
there's the Bay of Islands here in New Zealand. And again, um, we can go and we can look at various information um, that's being relayed here to the system. Um, obviously, because we're not moving anywhere, uh, there's not lots of things to look at right now. So your radar information, does it come up on here as well? This isn't linked to the radar, I don't believe. Ah, okay. No, the radar is purely on the uh, right. Furunu side yeah, of things. Yeah. Um, but should you want to add a Raymarine radar system to the boat, then obviously oh, yeah, that, that would come straight in. through to it. And that's the great thing yeah. about this is that um, Raymarine is, you know, a fantastic brand available all over the world. And if you ever want to add to it or you want to, you know, do anything with it, you're not going to find difficulty in, in being able to do that. Um, the other thing that's fitted on this boat, which is fantastic, is they've got a small boat computer. And here's the keyboard for it. And with the boat computer, they've actually got open CPN, um, which is another form of navigating, um, which a lot of long distance cruisers use. And that's an open source um, bit of software, mm -hmm. which um, has a lot of maps and aerial uh, photographs on them and so on, which can be really handy in places like atolls when you're trying to avoid bombies, being able yeah. to, yeah, mm -hmm. being able to navigate compare. yeah, off a of satellite image that's is right. very, very handy. Yeah. So that's not just for navigation, it's also to a full-on computer um send an email or you know you don't have to have an additional laptop that's just yeah, computer it's running, right there it's running windows software and then when she boots up there'll be an icon for open cpn over oh, yeah. here yeah which is fantastic i'll just fire her up convenient and there we oh go. yeah yeah okay so, they show much more traditional charts. Yeah. Because this is an open source software, it's actually free. It's, you know, cruisers share it amongst themselves um, yeah. and uh, um, the various layers as well that are on there, which is things like the satellite imagery and so on. Again, um, you know, cruisers are able to just share that amongst themselves and uh, yeah, you don't have to pay a penny for it, which is great, hence uh, the open open source software. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I, I found that once I started using it, I it's much more detailed as far as depths and reefs and moorings and all. Um, yeah, I'll yeah. just see if I can really bring great. up a, uh, you might have the satellite image for here. There we go. So you can actually see the chart that it's pulling off and the overlay. Okay. Additional USB charges in here. And There's also in the bottom here, there are two VHF ICOM handheld VHFs, which are fantastic if you uh, one of you wants to take off in the dinghy and yeah, go ashore. Yeah, great for ship ashore. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, very handy to have as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then we've got the controller for the ducted heater out here. And then on this side, we have control for the water maker. Yeah, we've got the water maker and the generator here. Yes, both, both of them, side. yeah. And yeah, then yeah. more of the control yeah. of the water maker. The water maker also has a control panel on this side here. Yeah. So the water maker is a distillator and it's a duo. So it works on 220 as well as 12 volts and it does a hundred liter per hour. So it's a very big one for a boat of this size. Plus the boat has something like 700 liters of water as well. Um, it's uh, it's great this system as well because on a lot of water makers you have to actually sit patiently dialing up the pressure until it reaches the little green area which at that point you can start actually making fresh water from the seawater on this system it's all preset you turn it on and off it goes um, so there's no sitting around fiddling with it and getting it right it does all that automatically on this system yeah, yeah. and it also has a feature that's really great because um, you can Yes, the radio. <laughs> Thank you for that <laughs> security message. Um, yeah, it also has a feature, Nick was telling me, that you can actually set it up to stop automatically after a certain time. Yeah, I think so you can, you can just leave the boat, go to your shopping, come back, and your water tanks are full. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a great system. So Thank that's the dedicated yeah. um, LPG tanks, which is aerated as well, and the dive tanks and here there's huge small room huge small room for more gear if you wanted to but anyways that's where that is and in those cockpit lockers yeah it's really nice and tidy lots and lots of room 
Mm -hmm. Obviously, everything you can see is coming with the boat. Yeah, so that's right. This tends to all be where all the wash down equipment is, and hoses, and various connectors that you might leave along the way. Um, fishing chopping blocks, uh, brushes, there's all kinds of things in this one. Yeah, there's even fishing rods, very good quality yeah. ones. Kayaks, diving gear, dive compressor. <laughs> Amazing! Everything that's on the boat is staying, except for the pot plants over there. They belong to you, David. <laughs> right, so yeah, more stuff. And here is the other spare anchor. And there's another spare anchor uh, in the forward locker as well. Yeah, there's secondary yeah. anchor up yeah, there. Yeah, there's even two spare guns in there if yeah, you fancy spare catching guns. your dinner. Thank you. Picked up a little bit by the ducks. Our ducks would just love Kalimas, they're always around, <laughs> but they seem to have gone away. So, so we can have a look at the decks. So, the boat was fully surveyed, and the surveyor came up with a couple of little things. Which uh, one of them was actually a little design fault from Katana, which is minor, but then was repaired there. And uh, and yeah, Katana, take notes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll talk you through it because I was actually um, uh, partly involved in the repair of it. As you can see here, you've got your power winches which go back to the cockpit. Yeah. And your lines forward, um, running tunnels underneath the deck, which is great. Keeps yeah. the deck nice and clear, no ropes to trip over and so on. So that's not the real deck, that's a deck above the deck. That's right, this is a yeah. deck above. Well, they call it a tunnel which runs through tunnel. here. Yeah. And you can see the, the ropes entering at this point. Yeah. Now, in this section, which is a high traffic area, you're coming up from the steps, and everybody pretty much puts their foot there before mm -hmm. they walk up uh, forward on the boat. Now in this area, the deck was very thin um, because obviously the tunnel runs underneath it. And um, yeah, just through, just about everybody putting their right foot on here as they walk forward, this area was starting to flex quite a bit. So it was decided that rather than digging the whole deck out and you know, doing some absolutely major surgery here, um, the best thing to do would be to reinforce the deck. So underneath this great non-slip pad, which has been put on, um, there is actually a three to four mil um, GRP plate, which has stiffened the deck. It's double yeah. the stiffness of it, basically. And that's what sits under here. So it's not hiding anything nasty. It's actually stiffening it up. Because yeah, it yeah. It's starting to flex a lot, a lot. Coming up here, there was another small repair done here, um, which is where there are some pad eyes. And again, it was decided that um, they could do with some reinforcing in that area. Um, so the pad eyes were removed, it was all cleaned up. Underneath the deck um, is now a steel backing plate, which reinforces that area. And the pad eye now sits on top of that. Yeah, because um, they get a lot of upward pressure. Yeah, from they get pulled on a lot. To um, an awful lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So uh, that's one of the small repairs which has been done by the previous owner, but it's been done properly and uh, it's been signed off uh, by the, um, the surveyor. He's mm -hmm. happy with that. And then forward, so we've got storage locker, which is this one is dedicated to the sails. Yeah, so this is the main sail locker, really. Um, it's mostly empty. Um, yeah. Did Nick say there is a brand new code zero as code well? Code zero as well, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's so much room in here. They're on their way from the sail makers as we speak. Yes, yeah, so all the sails have been closely inspected. Um, pretty much the, well, the sails were taken off the boat. Uh, they were sent to the North Sail agent here in Opua and uh, any minor repairs that were required were all carried out. They've had a full survey done on the sails and um, uh, yeah, they're like new, they're fantastic, the sails on this boat. Yeah. As well as that, new canvases were added to the boat. Yeah, that's right. So um, new UV strip here yeah. and a whole new stack pack. Here. Yeah, the boot around the gooseneck was replaced yeah. as well, so she's looking very smart. Yeah. yeah, very smart. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so Nick was saying that he was he wanted to reinforce some of the whisker stays over there. Yeah, I'm not sure about that to be honest. I couldn't add anything to that. Um, but, so he's uh, replaced. I think they were Dyneema before, and now they are stainless steel. Uh, that's right. Sorry. Yes, you're correct. At the bow. Yeah. Yes. For the bow sprit the here. Bow sprit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bob stays. They're sometimes called as well. Um, coming off each hull here. Yeah. These were originally they're made out new. of Dyneema, mm -hmm. um, and there was a potential chafing issue there as well um, when it came to putting the bridle on. 
um, for the anchor and uh, yeah Nick just decided the sensible thing to do was to swap those out for stainless steel wire which is uh, mm -hmm. obviously a, a, a much stronger solution. Um, mm -hmm. So the ring was the rig was just fully inspected by the local rigging guru, um, rigging specialist. Yep, yep, they came down, they've been over the rig, they've replaced an awful lot of the running rigging. Um, uh, I think it's fair to say most of the halyards have been replaced, most of the sheets have been replaced. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of ropes coming off this boat, and brand new ones going on it, and uh, yeah, yeah, hence uh, she's looking so good at the moment. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she had a survey done and uh, now she's passed it with flying colours, so yeah. Oh, that's really. great. Um, okay. The trampoline. Um, Obviously, a, a feature on catamarans um, that was inspected because um, uh, obviously you don't want to have any problems with that. Um, a couple of eyelets were replaced on it, and uh, yeah, like I said, she's uh, she's uh, in perfect condition now. Here, that's just some bits and bobs. All the water ties. Yeah, all the little water ties, few fenders. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a couple of gas bottles there, which are European style bottles, I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, again, just somewhere to uh, stash all your bits and bobs. But there's great the amount of storage that there is on this boat. It's, um, it's something that's really important for any kind of long distance cruising because you don't want to be climbing over things around the cabin all the time. Hmm. I love all the finishing touches, even just uh, backrest here. You know, and it's nice to see two people out here and, you know, I haven't seen yeah. a yeah. boat with a backrest on the bow before, that's so great. Yeah. And even little other touches like the leathers here and the leathers over there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the so nice things much to it. on the boat is uh, you'll find new places to come and sit the trees and uh, Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so in here... Okay, so we've got these three big lockers at the front of the boat which sit just forward of the main cabin. Yeah. And uh, here we've got some of the tankage and we've got some mooring ropes and some sheets in here. Um, Another anchor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's also a wash down hose facility here too. Yes. Um, which allows you to have a hose on the foredeck. There's so much storage space. Yes. In the centre one is the windlass. Oh yeah, and that's just been uh, fully re uh, main serviced. Yeah, the windlass serviced. was actually taken off the boat completely. Taken off, yeah. Um, she's been stripped down by the local engineers and uh, she's been given a full overhaul, so mm. she is ready so to go. So 1700 word, I understand now when Nick talks about it as being a workhorse. I mean, that's big enough for about twice of this size. Yeah, at it's, least. it's a mini ship uh, windlass. Yeah. It's, uh, it's yeah. a big piece of kit, that. And you've also got your remote control here to yeah. allow you to control the windows well, yeah. from uh, here without getting your hands in the way or anything like that they can obviously be operated manually too yeah um, uh, there's a bar here which slots in here which allows yeah, you that's right. to you can pick the ropes. chain up yeah mm -hmm. worst case scenario um, you could bring it up manually and this little wheel here acts as a clutch here oh yeah um, so when the anchor is falling out um, being paid out you, you can, can slow it down it here yeah. yeah right yeah. but most people tend to use the controls for in and out at this point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you've got your two fillers here as well for your diesel tanks. They're just on the inboard side here. Mm -hmm. Two. Port and starboard. And then over here. Here we've got again more fuel tanks but also the jerry cans mm -hmm. um, and the anchor chain um, which uh, so flex down. 100 meters, 100 meters of anchor chain. Yeah. Yeah more than enough oh, yeah and, uh, absolutely yeah all your little bits and bobs your oil for topping off the engine should they ever need it and mm -hmm. uh, obviously any extra fuel you might want if you're doing extended passages where you might want to carry a little bit more yep. <laughs> superb Have a look at the engine rooms okay so really easy to access the engines there's obviously an engine port and starboard because it's a catamaran and these literally rock backwards and they're held by these two stays and inside here you can see oh it's so room. nice and tidy and today you had a mechanical inspection then 
Yeah, we Was took JB her out. Marine? Yeah, the local engineer came out. Um, she's had a full service and um, she's actually had a couple of components uh, stripped down and rebuilt just as precautionary. Um, and we took her out for a sea trail today and uh, yeah, she's running absolutely great. Um, in this particular engine room, you've also got the dive compressor. Yes, which is this unit the Bauer here. Junior, yeah. Yeah, so the dive compressor lives in here. Oh, um, it's so but, great. Yeah, one of the great things about um, these engine rooms is the access to work on the engines. Um, you know, something that can't be understated really is that yeah. you can get at everything and you can work on it easily. Um, at the back here, you can see the water strainer and you can also see um, the uh, fuel filter um, uh, system here, which um, filters the fuel before it actually enters the engine. Um, this system's actually great by Parker. Um, you can actually do this without having to spill fuel everywhere because the filter comes out the top of oh, the unit, yes. which is really handy. And then the engine also has its own fuel filtering. filtering. Yeah, yeah, and then it's got the actual filter which attaches to the engine, so that's a primary filter, and then you go through to your secondary. Mm -hmm. um, you've got automatic fire extinguishers in here as well. And Another uh, bilge pump down here, I can see. Yep. And uh, so the boat has lithium batteries for house batteries, but I see that's an AGM battery for so they, the start? For the starter batteries, yeah, yeah. For the engine starter batteries, it's much better to use those than uh, than use the domestic bank. So it has independent uh, means of starting the engine um, okay. for each engine. Then you can see your quadrants really well here. That's great if you need to check that everything's working fine. Yep, uh, you've got one of the hydraulic rams here for the auto helm system too. Yeah. Um, that runs on hydraulics. Um, that's on this side and then the other auto helm is obviously in the other engine bay. Okay, so port side. Okay, port side engine again. Just undo it. Tip it backwards. Very easy to do. You don't have to be yeah. strong. Oh, and it. here we have the Pagro generator. Four kilowatt generator. Yeah. This unit here is the battery box, which is for the generator, so it has its own oh, it independent has its own one. battery as well. Um, and uh, here you've got the start. The one for the for yeah. the motor. And yeah. here's the second hydraulic unit. Um, yes. For the uh, auto helm. So nice to see such a tidy engine room. Just have another little look. And there. Nice hot top with dimmable LED lights for different moods. It's really easy to move around. Those director's chairs were inside last time I saw them, but they can be folded and put away. Really wide entryway. I love that. And then, yeah. This is nice, it doesn't get all squeaky and hard, like you know on a so many catamaran it's really hard to close the door. And that's moving very well. Okay. And uh, McMurdo Eperb, yes that's the Eperb. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the automatic release for the Eperb. Yes, that's it. That's it's inside there. Mm -hmm. And even if you can't get to the EPIRB to release it. Um, oh, yeah, it's happen. got a hydrostatic um, release thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there will be all of the list of this stuff on the brochure and on the specs on the internet, but yeah, there is a very, very long list of safety features on this boat. Nothing but the safest way to travel around the world for Nick and his family. So let's have a look inside now. A little bit, because poor David's getting very tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we have the really awesome galley, and uh, you'll probably notice that it's a boat that's really great for tall people. Uh, the bench is high, the, the head room is really high, and um, David is actually, uh, well, you and I, you're quite, quite tall. Yeah, I mean, you could easily six be foot. over six foot in there, yeah. six foot two, three, and you still wouldn't Nick be banging very, your head. Yeah, yeah, and there's his plenty German of room. Wife is very tall, Tanya mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah. so anyway, everything is really well set up here. Um, we have access to everything. Um, redundant so taps is some for seawater, for filtrate. The, 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 this one comes directly from the water makeup. So, um, if for whatever reason you had water in your tank that you weren't 100% sure about, you can actually get your drinking water straight out the tap from the water maker. So, 
no need to empty all the tanks and then try that again. Um, okay, so lots and lots of room. It's actually just as it goes into the back here. This, I'm not sure if it was retrofitted or if it was a katana feature, but it's really great and it has its uh, oven. So you can see everything is in really nice, clean condition. It's a great oven that Tanya has made many, many amazing loaves of bread in here. <laughs> um, I really like this as well, just the uh, still thing here so that you can cut things on and you don't have to have all your all your cutting boards that fly around and, and a difficult to store and it's nice and hygienic. And um, you have your stove up here. Plenty of storage actually. Just really just a lot of storage and you'll notice that um exhaust jaws for example they're really quiet. <laughs> And believe it or not, it's the little thing that often people tell me, you know, it's infuriating how much noise is on a boat. But on Kalima, the floors are quiet, the drawers are quiet, everything's just, it's a nice, luxurious feel to the boat. Um, so yeah, just, um, and everything that is here is staying on. So even cleaning stuff and, uh, you know, just everything that you might just not wear a good thing, you just... From the airport with your suitcase and your clothes and some food and that's it, you are home. Here is a really large capacity fridge and it's full stainless steel so it's also the top of the range and very nice to keep it clean. And um, as far as boot fridges, this one is a very big one, it's 120 liters. And the freezer are here which is the same, just colder. Big capacity as well. So. Yeah, I actually came on board today just to uh, double check everything, and uh, um, yeah, there's bags of ice in there, bags and uh, it's working yeah. fantastic. The freezer, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come and borrow some of it, actually. Imagine yeah. this one, it's good. And um, yeah, so tools, lots of tools, lots of spares, nice and organized. Also, everything. I mean, everything that's here, as I said before, except for the plants, are staying for the new orders. So. So, I mean, so much storage, you could easily just condense some of this stuff into, you know, another drawer and then keep some of this for some more different gear if you wanted to. It's interesting how every cruiser does it, um, but we've all got <laughs> we've all got a little drawer with tools that we want to get to uh, oh, quickly. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, um, this is obviously yeah. where the previous then, owner put them. Yeah. Exactly. And then look, this is pretty much empty. So there's so much more room for whatever mm. you need. Um, and I mean, with the, the owners with their two kids living on board for three years and the, the kids had huge amounts of learning material because they did homeschooling um, and they had to have room for a million books and exercise books and, and all sorts of uh, equipment um, and there was room for everything as well as their stuff and being children, toys and everything else and really just amazing how much room there is for everything. So yeah, just uh, more storage with a really big cupboard. This one's empty. It's another big one there. So we'll have a look. There's just all here. I'm not going to open them all, but there's also under this ottoman and uh, behind here. Um, so we'll have a look first. Just to mention this oh, good yeah. point and is the, the table, which opens and closes. Um, yeah. It's very convenient. When the kids were doing the homework, they had heaps of room. Right, so now we're going to have a look at the master cabin. And it's amazing! So, um, notice access is wide. Uh, on a lot of boats, I find it's a little bit narrow, but uh, you can go down here easy in all weather. Um, you can hold on to a lot of different uh, anchor points, so you always have something to brace yourself as well. Um, nice feature is a big full length mirror and the lockable doors, which easy to move and to just shut yourself up nicely in your little apartment here. Total privacy and it's quiet. I mean, if, they, if you have kids and they're really noisy and annoying, then you just, you know, close the door and you're nice and comfy in here. And uh, behind that door, while we've got that closed, let's have a look. So. A whole heap of bed linen, 
and uh, that's all very, it's all completely clean and folded and ready for you. Whatever you don't want, you can. Wait. <laughs> oh, good surprise. Whatever you don't want, you can um, give it away, you know, but I think it's some very nice stuff. And uh, okay, so in here we have Nick's uh, books and all of the manuals and documentations for every area of the boat. He said that if it's not here, it doesn't exist, it's not on the boat. So you, you don't have to go and Google things out at sea and figure out what does what or you troubleshoot anything, it's all here and really well organized and labeled. It's even ventilated so it doesn't get you know moisture damage and then really nice little feature here you have this desk you can sit here and you can do stuff um, this is, I think this is a sextant correct yeah that's yeah. a really nice sextant yeah and that's coming with the boat too how lucky mm -hmm. is going to be the owners of this boat learning the celestial navigation <laughs> and here's so that's frisk compressor that kind of stuff um, and that's just for this purpose and it has a dedicated ventilation area which is necessary some more storage space and plugs and bits and bobs as you say and well obviously you have your escape hatch which is the safe one not the one that has been recalled that one is totally bulletproof and has been inspected obviously um you've got storage under the bed very easy to lift actually it's kind of like an assisted lifting thing so it's not too heavy and um, some drawers really big drawers so you really can put a hell of a lot of wardrobe in here while i'm at it all of the windows um deck windows and hatches i mean and windows have all been completely resealed and there is no leaks anywhere and we've had torrential rain and cyclones even recently and there was no moisture in the woods. Um, here you have some more of the cross ventilation and lighting and very comfy bed and, and more of the storage and you also have the heater controls in here if you were feeling cold. Oops. Um, Floors, very easy to get in there if you wanted extra storage space um, you can use those and the latch system is nice you don't have to use stocking cups so may as well just have a look at all of them so really nice clean bilges the wires are held together very sophisticated wire cage to stop them from being caught on something or chafing And there's a little inspection hatch. This is a casing for the stack of boards, obviously. Um, and more of the same. So heaps more storage room in here if you needed to um, put some stuff in here. Hanging specs. Okay. And here as well. So, really deep this one. So, ample storage. And then, that's incredible head area. Um, the windows, you've noticed, they have no crazing. By, you know, a lot of, uh, of boats, by the time they get to this, uh, they're eight years old now, they start to get crazing. But this is lovely. Also, um, this. There is no flaky paint or whatever, it's looking great. And uh, everything is really beautiful condition. There's no dings anywhere or, you know, fading. Um, nice big cupboard here. Um, here are all the, another huge area, which um, if you wanted to, perhaps you could put a washing machine in there. But right now there is all those slide jackets and harnesses, sorry. Right, yeah, these are all the lab packets, tethers. As you said, it's uh, 
it's a space which is crying out uh, for a washing machine. I yeah, mean, it would I fit think really that's, well in there. Yeah. that's right. Yep, yeah. So. So yeah, this is nice and convenient. So uh, back of fresh electric toilet. And that huge shower area with the door with its own window which opens. Um, so really plenty of ventilation from the top and from the side. You can brace yourself if you have to need to have a shower seat, so you can even sit down. So it's nice and safe to use in all weather. At the other side now, the guest side. So we have um, the back cabin. So often on Katanas, there is a bit of an issue with privacy. There is not enough doors, but this one has fully, um, see, even if I close this one, everyone has their own cabin and that's it, you know? Everyone has their own space. And um, if you have messy kids, you can close the door and not have to look at their mess. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> you walk it in some. Okay, so going into this cabin, this one is set up to be either twin berths or um, double, which is actually a queen size berth. So that's all just very easy. You just take up the center part and um, you just have those two. You can walk straight through. Um, and when that is set up as a double bed, then you have super, like, just great lighting, lighting, another opening hatch here, heaps of storage in here, and really, like, quite deep. I'm not going to open them right now, but they're really quite deep. And then in here, you have all this room as well. So, you know, perfect for boxes of toys and things, but for, for kids. And um, you have access to the i believe water tanks out here yeah so they are not directly under the bed which on a lot of catamarans the water tanks are actually right underneath the mattress and sometimes it makes a bit of noise this one's actually under all of that so you won't get any noise um, so that's another one of the bilges again super clean when you when you look at this boat, you often think that um, you're saying to get on bars about your own boat. <laughs> you know, it looks I wish my bilges were this clean. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so, um, so they've left a lot of things. Again, like you can decide what you want, but it's still very great. Like, for example, soda stream recharge. And believe it or not, when you're cruising around the world, those are really hard to get. When we were in Fiji, we were screaming out for them and visit you, you can't fly with them and you, you can't have them sent. So you just try and take a lot of them with you. The soda stream machine is up in the salon. Um, so kids love that. Great gin and tonic on tap. And then some, um, so that's all just, you know, that can be taken up if you wanted to, but they found that they really liked having that there just for gear. And then in here is a veritable chandlery. There's everything in here, so, and very well labeled. So, I'll, um, so you see, I mean, oh, so well labeled. Anything that we need is here, and, um, and then some. Sealants, lubricants, hose clamps. That's right, yeah. And Ooh. here's all the things for the water maker. Um, spare parts and, and maintenance items. Great for cleaning the hull, <laughs> the sucking cup, and uh, yeah, so massive extension cords, cell repair material if you ever needed them, extra rigging equipment, electricals, and etc. and etc. So that's a really nice big cupboard. I think a, a lot of sailors would be very envious of uh, the amount of tools and spares that are actually on board uh, Kalima. Um, uh, yeah, you really could pretty much deal with anything yeah. as you're going along with what's been left on the boat, basically. Yeah. Well, that's the difference between a cruising yacht and a marina boat. I mean, you gotta you gotta be completely self-sustainable if you're at sea. Yeah, yeah. You can't really call the repairer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sort it out yourself. 
so let's go now into the other guest cabin so um same to just you know access mm -hmm. another the bed for storage and that's well right now the cushions are over there but uh, you can decide to sleep with the cushions at that end if you want to um a very big um drawers again so that's good enough for two people but uh you know perfect for for a couple of kids and then and really gigantic <laughs> yeah locker I like how they are aerated as well because in the tropics you get condensation everywhere and things can get moldy. I think one of the things um, for me who's um, who's new to catamarans is um, the windows are just fantastic. I mean the panorama yeah. you get from your mm. bed in the morning um, is just yeah. stunning. Um, but obviously they're tinted so although you can see out perfectly people can't see in so yeah, easily that's um, right uh, mm -hmm. which is probably important to note and you've got these amazing windows here which give lots of ventilation mm -hmm. to the cabin two big windows and then you've also got should you want to these blinds which totally close the cabin yes, off as well yes that's really great yeah. and they're in good condition often those blinds are just don't look great but this one's have been looked after they're not damaged, they're really good. And then there's another deck hatch up there on this really big shelving here. Right, and again, the headroom, I would say it is what, eight foot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really great for tall people. Right, so I think that's covered. Oh yes, so that's um, the guest head area with another Tecma electric toilet, shower, wash basin, and you can put the shower up here. That's it. It's all just very convenient. The water just falls down here, gets automatically vacuumed out. There's a little button here to control it. And um, you can close that if you wanted to for privacy, but again, unless someone's right out with their nose against the window, you can't see inside, so that's great. Right, anything you would like to add? No, I mean, it? I think we've covered just about everything. I mean, there's a lot to talk about on this boat um, uh, and uh, it'd be very difficult to cover it all in one small video. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, I think you've covered the sort of uh, the important stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, she's a, she's a fantastic boat basically and she's, she's ready to go. Um, you know, as somebody who's done some blue water cruising myself, um, I know that- A lot, you've yeah. sailed all the way from England. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're being very yeah. humble there. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, you know, um, uh, obviously I got to know the previous owner Nick and uh, he's um, he's looked after the boat it's in fantastic condition um, he has genuinely gone beyond mm. to get this boat ready for sale and um, he's uh, he's also left a lot of important stuff behind which is going to be great for a future owner such as the tools and the spares and uh, yeah she is literally ready to untie and go and have an adventure yeah exactly that's why he pre that's amazing how much preparation he's done the past six or seven weeks and when people say turnkey, that's that's not an understatement. It's not a statement. I mean, here, mm -hmm. she is completely turnkey. The only things that he didn't do, they, they didn't do, sorry, was to replace those. They are in good condition. They are not damaged in any way, um, but um, they are a little bit faded. But it really was a matter of taste, and that's the reason why they haven't had the local trimmer replace this canvas it's only because someone might decide for a specific type of fabric or color but it's super serviceable and if you're going to go cruising with children you don't want to have to worry about them you know staining or damaging expensive new upholstery then why not just keep them on you know so that's all great here is a sort of stream yeah. Yeah, Karen, just, just talking about what you were saying with the upholstery one of the good things here in opua is that um you have just about every um trade on site yeah. it's absolutely brilliant whether it's canvases rigging whatever you want i mean although kalima doesn't need any of those things um but um uh yeah this is a really good place to start from um there's a 
there's a great community here and uh, yeah there's every trade on site you can imagine so yeah, yeah and amazing quality so there is a lot of uh of boats that come all the way to New Zealand just to be refitted here because it's super top quality and that's why the super yachts come here as well. Right, so final look. <laughs> right, awesome. Thanks a lot, David. Thanks for no, your help so as well. And thanks for looking after these boats so well. You're just amazing. Yeah. Well, like I said, I've been left babysitting her while uh, Nick's out of the country and um, anyone um, potentially coming to look at Kalima, um, uh, I will happily show her, um, uh, show them around the boat and um, uh, yeah, Nick's... Uh, I'm Nick's, sure how everything works. Yeah, and... Nick's, uh, Nick's happy for me to do that and, um, uh, and obviously he will be available as well should you want to talk to him directly about anything regarding yes. the boat, more importantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and that's your boat there, so you're not far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have so to look right. at Kalima every day. <laughs> yeah, and do like I do, buy lots yeah. of tickets. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot.